So a very, very warm welcome to everyone this morning as we join together in our worship this Advent Sunday morning. Um, there's just a few of us here in church, but we are gathered together from many places as one church to celebrate and worship at the start of this new year in the church's calendar. And wherever we are, God is with us. Our God, Emmanuel, God with us. So Advent is for us a time of preparation, a time for us to prepare for Christmas when we celebrate and remember Jesus' birth at Bethlehem and also a time for us to prepare for his return in glory. It is a time for us to reflect as we wait in darkness for the light that is Christ. So what does being a people of hope really mean? What does it look like in our daily lives? It's a time for us to pray for a renewal of hope and new beginnings. So as is traditional, we have our Advent wreath um, and we'll be lighting our first Advent candle and Lynn is going to light the candle for us as I say an Advent prayer. And there is a response which we will all say together and the words will be on the screen. People of God, awake. The day is coming soon when you shall see God face to face. Remember the ways and the works of God. God calls you out of darkness to walk in the light of his coming. You are God's children. Lord, make us one as we walk with Christ today and forever. Amen. So as we reflect on our first Advent candle, we remember those times when we have been found sleeping. We recall those times when we have spoken or acted, thought or done, been less than what God calls us to be. So we come to our time of confession. As we take a few moments of quiet to acknowledge our sins before God, I'm going to read a few verses from the prophet Isaiah that comes in our Old Testament reading for the day. You, Lord, are our Father. We are the clay. You are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be angry beyond measure, Lord. Do not remember our sins forever. O oh, look upon us, we pray, for we are all your people. Heavenly Father, you have created a universe of light. Forgive us when we return to darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. Cleanse and heal our blinded sight. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Holy Spirit, you give us light in our hearts. Renew us in faith and love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. O Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive us our sins. Open our eyes to God's truth. Strengthen us to do God's will and give us the joy of his kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
our collect for today, this Advent Sunday. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armour of light, now in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility, that on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal, through him who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So our first uh, Bible reading this morning is from 1 Corinthians, chapter 1, beginning at verse 3. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank my God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. For in him you have been enriched in every way, with all kinds of speech and with all knowledge, God thus confirming our testimony about Christ among you. Therefore, you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will also keep you firm to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, who has called you into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, Mark is now going to come and bring God's word to us. Our Gospel reading today is from the Gospel of Mark, uh, chapter 13, reading from verse 24. But in those days following that distress, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, people will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heavens. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you will know it is near right at the door. Truly I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away and to all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on your guard, be alert. You do not know when this time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and he puts his servants in, in charge each with their assigned task, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening, or at midnight, or when the rooster crows, or at dawn. If he suddenly comes, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Father, I pray that as we explore your words together, that your spirit will inspire us and teach us to become the people you have created us to be. Amen. So, Happy New Year. Well, Advent is the start of the church year. And what a year 2020 has turned out to be. This wasn't the year I had planned for sure. But we could also say that about many things in our life in any year. This relationship isn't what I thought it was. This workplace has changed. This church isn't what it was when I was growing up. And you could add your own version. There are thousands of variations on this theme, and they all seem to me to have a common thread or question running through them. 
And here's the question. What's going on in our world today? What's happening? It's a question about vulnerability and loss. It's a question about our anxiety and fear. It's a question about the uncertainty of our future and the unpredictable nature of life. It's a question of loss and sorrow. But those are circumstances not just around us, they are spiritual conditions that live within us. Those questions and conditions I've just listed are not new. They are not unique to us in this time and in this place. They were just as real and present in Jesus' time as our own. Now Jesus describes it differently to what we would. He says, In those times, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in heaven will be shaken. Now don't take this as literal. He's not necessarily predicting the future or giving us signs to look for so that we can predict the future. He's describing a present day reality. He's describing what it feels like when the whole world has changed, when things are no longer as they used to be, when there's been a cosmic shift in your life. He's describing what it's like when what used to give light and illumine your life no longer does. And this could be your health, it could be a relationship. He's describing when the stars by which you once navigated, your work or your career, no longer point the way. When the powers on which you depended, your health, your income, are no longer stable or dependable. Every one of us could describe a time in our life when we have experienced this, and especially this year. What I've just described are Advent experiences, descriptions and questions. Every year, on the first Sunday of Advent, the lectionary holds this before us because it is a truth about our life and world. It's what we face and live with. It's also the life and world into which the Son of Man comes to set us free with his spirit of truth and grace. This truth is always our entrance into Advent. In these dark threshold moments when our world is shaken, we we mostly want someone to do something about it, to fix it, to turn back the clock, to undo what's happened, make it like it used to be, or in the words of Anton Deck, I'm a celebrity and get me out of here. In today's Old Testament reading, it's what we hear Isaiah saying to God, Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down. God, get down here and do something about this. And who among us today hasn't said something like that? So how do we respond to this as we live in a culture of fear? You only have to read the newspapers or watch the news. Well, there are three steps. Firstly, identify the fear. Secondly, invite Jesus into that spot or into that fear. And then thirdly, allow the presence of Jesus, his love and his grace to loosen that grip of fear. Through this, your focus will be changed from where God is and what is God doing to where we are and what are we doing about our presence in the situation. Maybe instead of starting with what's going in the world, we ought to begin with the question, What's going on in me? Because more often than not, we do not see other people and the world as they are, but as we are. The world is constantly modelling us. We have built up a false identity of ourselves and our value based on our education, our career, our anxieties, compulsions, appetites and attachments. If I'm all wound up and anxious, the world is a difficult place to be and I want to run away. If I am living in the past and the way it used to be, I'll miss this present moment. If I am scared and frightened, other people can easily become threats and enemies. If my life is full of problems, I'll be quick to judge others. If I'm filled with guilt, I'll look for someone to blame, and the list goes on. If I'm not awake too and aware of these things, they will overtake my life. And maybe that's what Jesus is getting at in today's gospel when he says that you've got to be awake, alert and aware. You've got to be on the watch and alert for what's going on around us and inside of us. We need to be reminded to wake up from our comatose state of being attached to the world. 
Now, if you look at people in restaurants and cafes, a bit difficult at the moment, or even in queues, they're always attached to their phone. We need to be alert for this attachment and the others that the world tries to bind us to. We need to break free so that we can reconnect with the beauty of life, the mystery of love, the wonder of creation. Indeed, research into the first lockdown has shown us how much people came to appreciate uh, the countryside near to where they lived. We need to be connected to that original goodness and the beauty that resides in each one of us, that has always been there, that has never been lost, maybe forgotten, but never lost. So how do we do this? Well, Psalm 51 offers us a clue. A broken and contrite heart God will not despise. This season of Advent is a time of preparation when we could use the prayer of examine to spend time in prayer alone, away from the phone and the world, for maybe half an hour a day to allow us to wrestle with our false identity, to allow the Spirit to set us free. We need to be reminded and connected to each other in a deeper way. We need to awaken to hope and grace and love. We need to be alert to the presence of God in unexpected places and surprising ways. I wonder if a modern uh, version of uh, Jesus' illustration could be set in a school classroom. Do you remember what would happen when the teacher left the room? Did everyone carry on working quietly? And do you remember the scramble to get back in your place, pen in hand and head down as the teacher returned? So let me ask you this. What do you need to watch for today? Perhaps there's a persistent fear and anxiety or relationship with, that we keep telling ourselves we'll deal with next week or when we're not so tired or stressed. Or perhaps it's something we should be doing like praying, giving, offering some help to someone or serving some way in our local community. What would make a difference in your life today that would change the way you see yourself, that would change the way you engage with the world, that would change the way you see another, change the way you live your relationships? What is that one thing for you today? And what if you took that one thing and carried it ever so lightly through this season of Advent. Now, I don't mean go on a quest or make it another task to be accomplished. I mean that you take that one thing you just thought of, that one thing you need to awaken to, and you let it guide your decisions. Let it help you choose the words you speak to be the lens through which you see life, others, and yourself. Can you imagine the possibilities that you might create for yourself on Christmas Day? You've got it. You know what it is. Take it with you today. Wherever you go, whatever you are doing, whoever you are with, let it be your doorway into, into Advent. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The teacher is in the corridor. Amen. two really great questions to help frame us <clears throat> walking forward into Advent. What is going on in me and what do I need to watch for? Thank you, Mark. Our first response after that, we're going to join together and corporately um, state what we believe, believe, say our prayer together. And perhaps that's going to help us as we frame our own response to those words and that call from Jesus. So we're going to join together, uh, the words will be on the screen, to declare our faith as one people before the one true God. We say together, we believe in God the Father, 
from whom every family in heaven and earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Lynn is now going to come and lead us in our intercessions. Let us pray. Loving Lord, in Corinthians we are told God is faithful, who has called you into the fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, Lord, when we come to you with open hearts, we ask that you let us know that you are close to strengthen our faith and deepen our love. Let us pray for one another, particularly at this time with restrictions on our lives during lockdown and not being able to meet face to face. Lord Jesus, send your Holy Spirit upon us as we enter the advent of your coming. In our prayers today, we come to you to ask to guide us through this time. During this year, we have been continually working to meet the challenges that we have faced. We give thanks for those who have planned our way ahead and for their encouragement to be able to lead us into dealing with the pandemic, quickly putting in place the necessary adjustments and enabling us to reach out to as many people as possible. Lord, as you love us, help us to let love motivate our actions, to love one another, to care for those in the community and heal disagreements. As we plan to reopen for public worship, we know that Advent is going to look very different this year and pray that we can work together and meet the ever-changing situation. We pray that as we come out of the current lockdown, that infection rates will fall so that your church can go ahead with the services that have been planned for this Christmas time. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for your church throughout the world. We pray that through these different times, that those working to spread your word can still reach out to your people. Where there is some greed, fear and prejudice, we ask that your truth can be felt and that we can create peace for all, bringing a joyful hope that there is always a better way. Lord, let all those suffering throughout your world not be forgotten whilst dealing with COVID. At this time, we particularly ask for wisdom for our leaders and for all those in authority. We ask that their judgments consider everyone especially as many people may be suffering hardship at the moment. We ask for a fair society for all. We also ask you to be with our government as they continue negotiations with the European Union over Brexit. With restrictions being eased for Christmas, guide us all so that the decisions we make will keep us safe during this time. We give thanks for the news of further vaccines which give us hope. And also give thanks for the scientists who are working so hard for an answer to fight against the virus. At this Advent time and for Christmas, we therefore ask you to grant us peace. Peace in our homes, peace in our churches and peace in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. One way of reaching out to the community is through Advent in a Box, organised by Messy Church. We give thanks for the inspiration of Messy Church in the way it communicates with the neighbourhood and give thanks for those involved and the work and the time they put into creating this wonderful way to ensure people can feel in touch with you. We also give thanks for the leaders of the uniformed organisations <coughs> who, <have also, coughs> who have also been inspired to use Zoom which has enabled the children to keep in touch with one another within their groups. Lord, in your mercy. We continue to pray for the NHS, as in some areas they start to come under pressure with dealing with cases of COVID. We give thanks for the care they give and their dedication in dealing with all those who are suffering, not only from COVID, but for whatever reason. 
Let us remember them particularly around Christmas, together with the other emergency services, when they will still be working hard to care for us. Please come into the lives of those who are lonely at this time or are suffering with mental health issues and bring them hope for the future. For all those who are in hospital, we pray that they will recover and be able to return to their homes before Christmas. Lord, for those who are mourning the loss of a loved one, give them strength to cope with their loss. Help those grieving to trust that you're at work in their lives so that they may feel your comfort. In the silence, please bring to mind anyone known to you and in need of your prayers. As we approach Christmas, Lord, we particularly ask you to come in the lives of the millions of people who are fearful and anxious at this time. The Church of England theme for this Christmas is comfort and joy. In the following week, help us to focus on the comfort and joy you bring into our lives, Lord. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So as we gather our prayers and praises into one, <clears throat> as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Okay, so we come now to our notices. So congratulations to anyone who is celebrating this week, any birthdays or anniversaries. We pray that you have a wonderful time of celebration in your families. Um, as Lynn mentioned in, in our prayer time, the good news is that um, public worship can resume after this period of national lockdown. However, we will still be restricted on our numbers, so we will go return to, to the model that we had before, um, before this lockdown period. So we do have restricted numbers here in church, so if you can continue to join us from home, please do so, and obviously continue to stay safe um, if you or anyone in your house, household are particularly vulnerable at this time. But from next Sunday, we will be able to welcome some people back into church, so that's um, going to be really, really great for us, and particularly as we look forward into uh, Christmas. Um, please join us Monday to Thursday at 9am for morning prayer. Um, that's via the parish Facebook page. Um, and one thing that we are, which will be happening during um, Advent, um, during December, is we will, we will hold a ho Holy Communion on Thursday mornings at 10am for every Thursday in December. So our private prayer time will look slightly different. There will be Holy Communion at 10, again, restricted numbers um, that we will have to abide by and wear face masks and you know, all of the normal restrictions. Uh, private prayer will be from 12 till 2. So 10 a.m. for Holy Communion, private prayer, 12 till 2 for every Thursday in December. Uh, just a reminder that there is a Zoom coffee time after this service. Uh, you can find the link details on the website under the events page. 
and Ken will also be bringing uh, to us family time shortly after we finish this service. Uh, just a reminder that our parish healing and ministry team are still available, so uh, please make contact with us if you feel in particular need at this time and there are people available to pray with you and for you. Um, again, Lynn mentioned the Church of England for this Advent are launching um, Comfort and Joy. Uh, you can sign up for free to receive a daily reflection during Advent, um, which will be you know, well worth signing up for. Uh, details are on the website. Uh, we are also encouraged... Um, to put a nativity scene, a star, or something relating to Jesus or God in our windows this Christmas time. Um, I'm sure you've noticed there are an awful lot of Christmas decorations already going up all around, um, and people already starting um, to look forward to Christmas. So as a great witness for us, wherever we are, in our homes, in our windows, just to put something up to remind people of Jesus this Christmas and Advent time. Um, there's also details on the website about the, different, um, the difference that's happening this year with Operation Christmas Child Shoebox. So please, if you're used to doing a, a shoebox at this time of year, um, we are not collecting those in, in church. We're not a collection point. There are details on the website if you wish to, to engage in that as to where you can um, donate your boxes and there are some new collection dates on there, so please be aware of that. Um, and the November Bullseye is also available on the website, so do have a read of that when you can. And keep an eye on the website for our Christmas services, um, details of which will, will slowly go on the website as we move forward. Um, giving. We are in this diocese um, exploring our giving and stewardship with a fresh initiative um, which is centred around generous God, generous disciples. There is going to be a launch service at 3am today on the diocesan website so please if you're able to um, engage with that. We continue to thank you all for the monetary offerings that you give to us here in Hornchurch. Our outgoings uh, still continue, even in these restricted times. So thank you for your continued giving. Uh, details on how you can give are on the website. You can give in a variety of ways. Um, and if you're not already signed up for the gift aid and you are a UK taxpayer, please consider doing so. Let's... Let's pray and give thanks for the offerings that we have received this week. Lord, you are indeed our generous God, and we want to be generous disciples. You give us all that we have, all that we need, and so we give back to you for the work of your church and for the benefit of all, that your name may be glorified in this place. Amen. I think that's all I notices. I'm getting an okay from Ken, so we will continue. Tomorrow, some of you may um, have thought forward to tomorrow. It is St Andrew's Day. Um, and so we will be celebrating our patronal festival um, for St Andrew's. Church and Ken will be um, remembering and celebrating that during morning, pr morning prayer tomorrow. So if you are able to join at 9am, please do so. But if not, please do remember um, your, the church in your prayers tomorrow as we, we remember us as, and celebrate and be thankful for us as a community of God's people here in this place. Now, today's set psalm in the lectionary is Psalm 80, and there's a, an inbuilt, a repeated refrain within Psalm 80. 
And I thought this would be really useful for us to hold this refrain in our minds this week as we begin our journey through Advent. And it's a refrain which is important for each one of us as individuals, but also for tomorrow um, as we think about and remember and be thankful for us as a community, for us as a church going forward, for all of us, the church, it's you and it's me, as we walk forward into this year, ready to worship God, to serve God and to serve our community as God's people in this place at this time. So listen to these words from Psalm 80. Restore us, O God. Make your face shine on us, that we may be saved. Restore us, O God. Make your face shine on us, that we may be saved. Let that be our Advent prayer this coming week that we are restored and healed and made whole as God's face shines down upon each one of us and that we remember that we are a saved people. So as we go, I pray that this Advent season may be joyful and full of wonder for each one of us as we look for the coming of our Saviour. These words from Romans... Now is the time to wake out of our sleep, for now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. May God, the Holy Spirit, make us steadfast in faith, joyful in hope and constant in love. Amen. As we await our coming Saviour, go in the peace of Christ, Thanks be to God. Amen.